everybody. I know what you're here for. Let's be honest. Originally, I was only going to get the blood wine, but when I realized Star Trek wines was going to require me to get two bottles, I decided to go for a white as a secondary wine. So each of these bottles was about 50 bucks. You can't go out into the cold, dark depths of space alone. It says here, take this with you. I specifically did not wear a red shirt today, just in case. The Sauvignon has been sitting in the fridge for most of the day, so it's nice and cold. Blood wine, as it should be, is out in room temperature. If anything, I feel like I should have maybe heated it up to like blood temperature, but that would be gross. So let's not do that. Glory to you and your house as well. So I have the two wines. I even have different glasses. We're going fancy. This is more of a red wine glass and this is more of a white wine glass. We have the special reserve, United Federation of Planets Sauvignon Blanc. We are going to test wine today. You're all on this journey with me. You're all on this journey with me. And if I'm reading on the back, 2019 Sauvignon Blanc, Mendocino, California. United Federations of Planets Sauvignon Blanc. Founded in 2161 by an alliance of humans, Vulcans, Andorians, and Tellurites, the United Federation of Planets has long recognized the core principles of mutual cooperation and the idea that the whole is greater than the sum of its parts. Crafted by our intergalactic sommelier, that would be an awesome job, this elegant Sauvignon Blanc was created especially for diplomatic bouquets banquets wow i haven't even started drinking yet federation council gatherings and planetary assemblies grapes used for this interstellar federation wine were sourced from wines along rolling hillsides overlooking the ocean on planet earth florals similar to those found on Risa's Soraya Bay. Uh-oh, the only thing I know about Risa is that that's where that cracked up game came from. The one that like took over the entire enterprise and damn it, Wesley had to come and fix it. Risa, the sex planet. Flavors of elegant tropical fruits and white peach burst forth with a refined acidity that balances the ripe citrus aromas. This wine pays homage to the history and mission of the Federation, a dream that became a reality and spread throughout the stars. This bottle's actually getting kind of heavy right now. StarTrekWines.com by Wines That Rock. It has an actual number on it. This is official Federation issue 2036. So it's a numbered bottle. I feel special. Okay, I'm gonna see if I can open and leave some of the label here because I really like I really like the Federation logo on here and I don't I don't want to take it off although it is here too but that's okay I'm never good at this way of opening wines by the way this is this is the way in theory you're supposed to do it and I never do it this way I just go full on trying to like open up all the foil score here you go who wants it who wants me to save it for them I think it even has the Federation symbol on the cork Oh, this is a cool, oh, this is a cool cork. Okay. And am I nervous by having all these liquids so close to my computer? Yes, I am. It does say United Federation of Planets on there, on the cork itself. Live long and prosper. Did I start track right? Yes, you did. Good job. All right, stay. Cool. I don't pretend to be a sommelier, by the, by the way. I just like wine. <laughs> Let the backseat drinking begin. For those of you who do not drink wine normally, Sauvignon Blanc tends to be pretty crisp. It can go either kind of New Zealand Sauvignon Blanc, very, very grapefruity, lots of citrus, or it can be more smooth. I don't tend to like a lot of grapefruit. A New Zealand Marlboro Sauvignon Blanc has a lot of grapefruit in it, but I tend to like ones that are a little bit smoother just because I think they're better food wines. All right, as far as the smell is concerned, it smells very light. It looks very light. So I'm not getting a ton of grapefruit, but I am getting a little bit of citrus. All right. And yes, I do a little of the obnoxious, like swirling thingy in your mouth. That's actually really nice. That's really nice. There was a little bit of grapefruit. There was a little bit of citrus but it's not biting. It's not crazy amounts of it. You taste stone fruit. It, it's like, it's just, oh. it's light, it's smooth. If you told me this was a French Sauvignon, I would believe you. But telling me that it's a Northern California one makes more sense. I feel this sudden urge to like negotiate peace and trade deals now. I, I don't know where that's coming from. All of a sudden I feel this, this sudden urge to 
deal with the Kobayashi Maru. That is actually delightful. This would be really, really good with fish. Like really good with fish. Halibut or like white fish or yeah, maybe salmon. Pasta, it'd be amazing with pasta. I would super order this again. It's a little on the light side, which is not bad. That's just, that's just the taste profile for it. Oh, f that's actually really, really good. You know, I would rank this pretty highly, to be honest. I would do like a nine, nine and a half out of 10 for this one. This is actually quite good. How does it compare with a Riesling? A Riesling tends to be a lot sweeter. I would say it's pretty equal in levels of like lightness, like Riesling is usually a little bit light, but this is not sweet. It's light, it's smooth, it lingers on the palate. Amazingly, I like it the more I drink it. Good job, Starfleet. Live long and prosper, guys. Cheers. It's logically delicious. I had a table once when I was working at a restaurant. It was two guys and they ordered the second cheapest red wine we had and the second most expensive red wine we had. And they told me to bring them both out and not to tell them which one was which. They could tell. <laughs> I, think, I mean, it, it, you can tell between those two, but I was actually really impressed that they went for it because that seemed like a fun way to drink wine. This was the, the glass I was drinking the white out of. This is the glass I'm gonna be drinking the red out of. Also, my face looks hilarious right now. <laughs> Who needs filters? I have wine glasses. Okay, so first of all, honestly, I don't think the bottle is as cool as the Federation one. I mean, it's nice, but I think they almost could have gone for more decoration on it. And can anyone tell me what the hell that says? It says must consume all of bottle. <laughs> Not poison. <laughs> all right, so let's see. Let's do the thing. Cabernet Sauvignon, 2018 California. Since the dawn, I'm not sure if I can do this right. Since the dawn of the Empire, Klingon mythology, this is gonna be terrible, speaks of captains and generals carrying barrels of their favorite blood wine into battle to celebrate their victories. For more than a millennium, honor, duty, and tradition have been the cornerstones of Klingon culture. Blood wine has long been a part of the Klingon ethos and played an important role in uniting the great houses. Blood wine is ritually consumed by warriors being inducted into the order of the Batleth. Utilizing the same ancient methods as the great Klingon vint vintners. Can't quite see Klingon settling down and owning a winery. The grapes used to create this traditional blood wine were cultivated to produce strong fruit, vibrant colors, and bold flavors. Fill your goblet and rejoice. As Klingons have said for centuries, celebrate for tomorrow we may die. Got stuff in like a small, oh, it says something in Klingon that I absolutely cannot read. Bat, battles? Yiltuh, kapla. Drink, honor, success. Is that really what it means, Tony? No, no, that's okay. I, I would assume you would cheat. Google is, I don't think, cheating at this point. Kapla, kapla. Is it Google Translate or like Duolingo? One of those has, has Klingon as a language to actually learn. Duolingo def has Klingon, that's awesome. Oh, I hate you, wax seals. I hate you with the fire of a thousand suns. I never do this well. This, this is awful. In theory, should be able to like move the knife around and then just like pop off the wax cap. Instead, you're sitting there digging a cap out of wax for like an age. So I'm trying to do this as hard as I can and bring honor to us all. Me, kind of, sort of. Okay, wait, wait. That was actually fairly successful. I got half of it. That was more successful than I usually am. See, and the digging. And the digging. This is where the digging happens. So like the other one, this one also has the, the Klingon symbol on the cork, which is freaking awesome. Ah, that's not wax, it's clotted blood. Okay, this part, this part I can do. This part's no problem. Okay, again, this is like a super cool cork. I'm gonna like, hold that up. Isn't that cool? That's what I really need. I need there to be a bottle opener batleth. Does that exist? Cause that should exist. Like, I don't want to throw these away. This is water. I'm cleansing the palate. So, mmm. That actually smells really good. Also, the, the bottle's a little textured, which is kind of cool. It is thick. Like, 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 like. There is some sediment. I can see it. Ooh, okay. This is a deep cab. Like, that is, that is dark. 
you can barely see any red in this. Like, that is a very dark cab, which bodes well. Okay, as far as the smell... Oh, wow. I'm getting, like, like blackberry. It's not earthy. It's not bright. It's not strawberry. It's not raspberry. We're talking, like, blackberry. Hmm, hint of roasted targ. A little bit of plum. Oh, that's nice. Little bit of a dry finish. It's darker than a Merlot. It tastes darker than a Merlot. It's darker than a Pinot Noir. I don't know. I, I always assume people drink wine because I worked in a restaurant for so long, but like, uh, that's probably a bad assumption to make. It's not earthy. It's not smoky. It's hard to pin down a flavor. It's a nice, dark, fruit-forward cab. You can't, you can't really compare the two. It's completely different. But if I was at dinner, I would 100% order both of these wines. Oh, holy crap, this would be good with steak. Nice, raw, juicy steak slain on the field of battle. This, this wine goes really well with slaughter. Just saying. How long do the tannins last after the sip? It's a medium finish. There, you can taste them. You de can definitely, I can definitely taste the tannins a little bit, but they don't linger that long. It's not an overly dry wine, as it really does hit kind of that middle line. This is just how I like my cabs to be. It's dark, it's smooth, it's a tiny bit dry, tiny bit dry. The wine inside is better than the bottle. I would say the Sauvignon Blanc, the wine is just as good as the bottle, because I really like the bottle. It kind of looks like a Saint Germain bottle, which I've always liked. I've always really liked the design of a Saint Germain bottle versus this one, which, I mean, I, I get it, but like, this one's cooler. It just is. What would you guys add to this bottle to make it look cooler? Like a slash mark or like blood dripping down? Ooh, a black iron looking bottle. I like that they attempted to do something with the kind of shorter, stouter, almost like a jug sort of thing. It's too vampiric. It's, it's, this isn't saying Klingon to me. Like if, if you told me this was a Vampire the Masquerade wine, I would believe you. Ooh, a metal base. Ooh, handles on the side, that would be cool. Okay, so the Sauvignon Blanc is 13.8% by volume. I would assume the blood wine's more, but it might not be. 14.5% by volume. So the red wine is is more alcoholic. Food bearing, J. Robbie. Klingons, it is a good day to dine. <laughs> I love it. Food pairing, so for the, hang on. We're, we're, we're gonna add, we're gonna, we're gonna add a little. Just to both, just, just cause I'm talking. Food pairing, for the, for the blood wine, full on steak, dude, full on steak. This is a very, very dark red wine. Pork would probably hold up to it. It's honestly, to me, I think it's a little too much for chicken. I think it would overwhelm it. It wouldn't really be worth it. And then versus like this Sauvignon, I also wouldn't, I might pair this Sauvignon with chicken if you were going with a really light preparation of it. Pasta chicken Alfredo. We were talking about um, fish earlier for sure. Halibut, white fish. I feel like there's a fish that I'm forgetting that I really, really like. Yellowtail, it would be amazing. Oh, this would go so well with sushi. Oh my God. Would I still pay the same amount for it if it didn't have the Klingon logo on it? It's a very good question. I spent 50 bucks on wine maybe once or twice in my life, and that was because I was really drunk after doing three or four wine tastings. So, you know, the, uh, the judgment was a little impaired. Probably part of the reason they can charge that is because it actually does look cool. It's got the Star Trek logo on the cork and all over the place, which is just kind of fun. But I think the real question is like, but so what? But so what? So what if it's more expensive because it has the Star Trek logo on it? It has the Star Trek logo on it. That's freaking cool. I like that. You can drink wine from anywhere. Why not drink one that has the Star Trek logo on it? Like. The stout, the Imperial Stormtrooper stout that I drank a couple weeks ago was way more fun because the bottle had a Stormtrooper on it. I'm okay with paying more for that, right? If I was going to like a party and, let's be honest, all my friends are nerds, but if I was going to a party of people who would also like appreciate these wines, I would probably bring it for people to drink there. By the way, thank you so much to everyone in my chat and everyone um, who was part of the donation goal that we did 
I guess it would have been, what, two weeks ago now? Thank you so much, so much, so much to everyone who donated to actually get these here. Hopefully it was worth it and you like it and you know whether or not it's worth it to you to buy for yourself. Thank you so much for joining me. And unfortunately I don't have my fancy wine corkage things. So I'm just gonna have to drink these wines fairly soon. Darn. You actually have to like kill some things drain and then send the blood to the wineries so that they can specifically bottle this for you. So this tastes of triumph and challenge. I don't know what the Klingon slancha is, but slancha. Sips are not turning into gulps. Don't shame me. Don't wine shame me. I'm doing great. How are you? I am enjoying the blood wine immensely, actually. Oh, and only mildly increased my homicidal tendencies, so it can't be working that well. Do I have that right? Should I do it that way? Does it matter? Not really? Hey, go there. You go there. I can't gauge this. 